And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. So the, yes, the, this ship, the foundation of the work of the message, Sister what says, God says, is going to go through. And I praise the Lord for that. what is coming upon many as an overwhelming surprise. I just want to, before, before I will invite you to pray with me, um, to invite you to go to the Bible, the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis, chapter 3. In this chapter, which is very well known, should be at least by every one of us, we find how Satan was able to introduce his kingdom into this earth, and it was by deception. Satan throughout the ages has been very um, successful into causing harm to God's people through God's church by persecution, by destruction. But if you pay close attention since the beginning, his more effective way to make people fall and to destroy is by deception. No wonder in the book great controversy, if you read the chapter Final Warnings, and by the way, that's where we got our one of our publications that we've been putting throughout the United States, throughout newspaper around this, this country and other countries, you know, the, the title Earth Final Warning. Because in that chapter, God brings through his prophet, how Satan was going to practically take the whole world captive in this end time. And she said also in that chapter that the servants of God not only are, being called, are going to be called to present the truth for this time, but also to warn the people about the enemies got uh, the, the Satan deception, been deceived. And uh, you can look at it in that chapter, final warning. Uh, of course, I paraphrase it in my Spanglish, but you can read it for yourself. It also said in that book, in that chapter, that the work that is going to be carried on around this time it's going to be just like a sowing of the seed when the latter rain will come. Tribes after tribes, multitude after multitude will come and join with the remnant. I believe that is a good news, isn't it? Amen. We heard earlier, you know, we're seeing here and there a little taste of what all this is going to be about. I want you to keep praying. My brethren, like never before for this ministry. Not that long ago, just a few months ago, 
we were able, by the grace of God, open up a radio, English radio program, The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, going from Florida to California, close to 40 radio stations across the country. And brethren, we are already having meeting with Sunday keeping ministers. They are calling and they want to know more. They want to know what's going on with this group of Seventh-day Adventist believers preaching a message that they never heard before. And when, when I hear this, it, it, it's satting into my heart. God knows. I, it's a burden. Because we as Seventh-day Adventists are being in, in this, especially in this country, for over, what, 160 years, Dr. Bandy? And when I hear people, especially preachers, saying that they never heard about, you know, the present truth at the same time, that should paint our soul, our heart. I believe, my brethren, that one of the reasons that the world is still in darkness of the truth, it's because we, as God's people, as a seven, the seven Adventist people, we are being also in some form also deceived by the great serpent. And I, I, I will explain. I will explain. Genesis, I mentioned before, chapter 3. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Say. Uh, those of you who kneel down, let's kneel down with me. Because the topic I'm going to bring this morning, I believe, uh, should be. Uh, should, should be I like a waking up call for each one of us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, again we come before thy throne, pleading for thy mercy, pleading for thy Holy Spirit, pleading for the presence of holy angels among ourselves, and help us, O oh Father, not only to understand truth, not only to know the truth, but to be sanctified through thy truth, help this congregation and your church around the world to get ready for thy coming. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 13, chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 13. 13 says, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled or deceived me, and I did eat. So we can see from the very beginning that uh, one of the ways that the enemy had conquered people from the very beginning. God's people, it was through deception. In this case, the serpent, Satan used the serpent, and then here comes a very um, a, a familiar text too, which is found on the same chapter, chapter, but verse 15. Now, uh, uh, Jesus talking to Satan himself, because he knew that, Satan, that the serpent was just a minion through which um, Satan was using. Now, I, I, I want to ask you a question before I move on. Remember, the very first deception that Satan used was a medium to deceive Eve. Isn't it? Do you think that Satan has changed his plan? <laughs> he saw from the very beginning that that was very effective. Use a medium... To deceive Eve, well, Adam and Eve. We will see through this presentation that in this end time, since 1848, that's not a misspelling. Some of you might be thinking, well, I thought that the battle would have started in 1844, because that's when the Advent movement came about. No, this presentation specifically will deal of what, how Satan sings. 1848 had been rehearsing or trying to reestablish re again the same method, the same mythology of destroying even God's people. 
by a way of mediums, by a way of deceptions. Listen to this, verse 15. So Jesus, knowing how Satan was using this medium of the serpent, he talked directly to him. He says, and I will put enmity or hostility. That will be another, maybe another more understandable word. Hostility enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seat and her seat and shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now God is describing that even though the enemy, the dragon, the devil was going to, uh, to deceive, we're going to, a, a war was going to, to be established between each one of the descendants. If a descendant will be uh, on the side of the enemy, it will be in hostility on the seat of, the, of God's church, the woman. And that will be another study for another day. I know that, uh, I know in meetings like this, maybe another time, it will be necessary to, to present a study from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, you know, bringing very clearly that God's true woman, God's true church throughout the ages, it's not just an organization. It's not a structure. It's not a corporation. But it, it is formed. It has been formed in the past. It's been formed today. It's going to be formed up to the end or, or composed of faithful souls. Amen? amen. I hear some amen. amen. Some people stay quiet. They say, well, I'm not too sure about it. So maybe I will ask Dr. Pani in the near future to bring a study about this over here or, 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 or some of, my, of our guests. Because it... it it is good to understand. I believe it is of vital importance for us to understand what it is into this conflict between good and evil, between the enemy, the dragon, and, and Jesus. And Satan has been trying to deceive even the very light. But that can be a study for another time. My time is, is counted over here. And I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. If you look at the, the program, they always give me only two presentations over here, which is okay. No? It's okay. 9.30 30 Saturday morning and Sunday night 30. All right? That's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to present the part one over here. No, I always, I I'm, shouldn't be joking. I always believe that one of my guests should take you know, the 11 o'clock and then so on. I mean, after all, that's what we're bringing our guests, you know, to, to minister to us, you know. So I, I, I don't want to put the blame on anybody. Um, so what I'm going to do in this hour is I'm going to present part one of this study. And tomorrow, as I usually do, I will try to combine part two of this presentation with a, a, a ministry update. So tomorrow, um, I got mentioned a couple of weeks in Tennessee, you know, and, and praise God, the people took my order. They went out in the afternoon and they brought more people in for the evening. So, so if you need to go out, it's to bring more people back in to the camp meeting uh, th this weekend. So tomorrow we're going to finish with this. And you will see, my brethren, throughout this presentation, that the same mythology that Satan use at the beginning to uh, sitting to establishing his throne in this world that's the same way that he's going to try to do and especially in this end time this end time and since God has been saying that we must be warned the people of his deception that's the reason that I have prepared this presentation to bring it to you of course in the afternoon also around four o'clock we're going to have a a little uh, topic on the communion service, but that's going to be not in relationship with this. So as we see uh, in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy, we, we know, though, that something was going to be uh, more dramatic in this end time. Why Satan has been, is going to be more uh, dramatic and more deceptive in this end time. Well, because he knows that his days are what? Counted. And in the book of Revelation chapter 12, which 
That's another beautiful chapter in which describe in different ages and throughout different ages who and what was the, the true church, again, the true woman, pure woman. And especially in this end time, it says right there very specifically that the Satan was going to establish a war. Not just being upset, but a war with who? With everybody? With a remnant. Yes. Yes, indeed. He knows that this time. Well, where should I stand up over here? I guess we got two cameras. Okay. So the battle of 1848. Why this is important for us to understand or to come in, at least into a knowledge. I, I'm not going to do this this morning because I've seen some brethren that were in some of my meetings. But I have found out that very few of our even historic brethren have been taking notice what really took place in 1848. And that's the reason that we prepare this presentation. We must know Paul, Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, I, I just want to ask you, can you see from back there? If not, then we can put the light off over here. Maybe we should put the light off right here on this side. At least so it can be more readable. Is that okay? Can we put the light off over here in this All that. You can read it, okay? All right. All right. I, I think it was over here that maybe the lights. Okay. That's better. Okay. The Bible says, my brethren, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Remember, to whom he, was he writing his letter? It was not to, to, the, to the heathens or to the world, worldliness, it was to the Christian church. And he says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not what? Ignorant of his devices. So Satan has employed many devices. But I believe, let me repeat, that one of the, the most effective device that he has introduced from the beginning, it is through deception, through a medium, through <laughs> using uh, uh, organizations, people, Animal in the case of uh, uh, Eve, a serpent, and so on and so on. Churches, isn't it? Yes, preachers. Now, the question that we have to be asking is, are we aware of the devil's devices? Or are we in ignorance, walking in the devil's trap? Many of us have been walking in the devil's trap, and we didn't even know it. Right? I mean, is that true? Many times, well, talking about into our closet in our circle. We heard last night that even, you know, in our time, Satan would, would make us think that everything is all right with us. We are in need of anything. And, and, and yet we are about to be spewed out of the mouth of Jesus. Can you think of a greater deception than that? Think that you are walking with Jesus that you are part of the remnant of God and being deceived into, into a sinful uh, situation in your life. So yes, Satan is very astute. And every time I, I come across, it doesn't matter how many times, every week, almost every day, God put me in touch, you know, through radio, through person to person or to meetings like this. And, and, and I, I, I praise God. I said, Lord, how merciful you were with me. You know, taking me out from one of the most darkest places in this earth, a Roman Catholic seminary, to bring me into this beautiful truth. But think about it. Can you think about a more deception that a young man can have, thinking that he's going to be getting ready for about five years, preparing himself to be a good priest, a good man, Minister for the Lord. And I was in the midst right there on the mouth of the Antichrist. Can you think of a greater deception like that? So brethren, again, Satan is a, has developed, a, 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 is becoming a masterpiece. His masterpiece 
is through this deception, making us believe that what is good is bad and what is bad is good. That's what it is. So we have to understand this thing, my, my brother. And we have to understand also what took place since 1844. Let's move on. So we need to know the conflict. Foundation late. Do you know that our foundation of the truth of the Sabbath wasn't laid up until 1848? How do we know? Well, one T, testimony to the church. Volume 1, page 5. The servant of the Lord says, the memorable Sabbath conferences of 1848 when Adventist believers in the newly revived Sabbath and sanctuary truth laid their what? Foundations of the distinctive doctrines held by the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. Well, you know, that's when the movement was coming. 1848. 1848. So, she said that the Sabbath and the sanctuary the memorable Sabbath conferences of 1844, word to the little flock, page 9, it says the memorable Sabbath conferences of 1848 gives us an insight into the experience and thinking of our pioneers in, the, in their earnest efforts to discover their position and work. So this year was so important because people that were understanding the Sabbath truth. They were getting together into what they call conferences, okay, meetings together, meetings like this. They were praying, they were studying, sharing ideas, sharing Bible texts on the Sabbath and on the sanctuary. And that was a very important year. The third angel's message, the base, the foundation was established, was, uh, yes, established in 18... 48. That year was very important. Hmm? Rise of the Sabbath keeping. Early writings. Page 22. It says, In the providence of God, the several Sabbath keeping ministers who let out in teaching this newfound truth in company with a number of their followers came together. What year? 1848. In five Sabbath conferences, through periods of fasting and praying. So they got together, getting together, not to, to see who was going to be the top leader, not to see who was going to be the bigger, but to, you know, to seek for truth, to establish what was in prophetic, in prophecy, being declared as the last movement that God was going to have to be working on behalf of humanity Amen. in this earth, the Advent movement. Mm -hmm. So that was, and then of course she mentioned, you know, Elder Bate, the Apostle of the Sabbath, she called it, Elder Bates. And we're going to know why. We want to know that why. She called that, took the lead in advocating the binding claims of the Sabbath. They get together, they get them together. Now these conferences, don't confuse with a, you know, like a church conferences now. We call it in this country, you know, uh, different conferences. Conference of Oklahoma, Florida, so on and so on. These are conferences, you know, they were meeting. Remember, the general conference was not even established yet. It was not until 1863. Okay? This is very good to understand. Because many people get the idea that God had to put together a conference to move the work. No. God was moving through his work. Even the conference was established. And the, and, the, and the foundation was established on the Sabbath and the sanctuary years before there was a general conference. Okay, let's move along. There were five Sabbath conferences. Five. Rocky Hill, you can read it like that. Over there, Connecticut. April 20 through 24, 1848, okay? Second, the second one, Volney, New York, beginning August, 18, 1848. 
The third one, Port Gibson, New York. That's, I, there's a reason why we highlight this one. You're going to see why now in a moment. The third one was carry on on August 27 and 28, 1848, and it was at Hiram Exxon's barn. Very important. The fourth one was in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, September 8 and 9, 1848. The fifth one was in Tosh, Maine, October 20 and through 22, 1848, at the Brothers Holland's house. Now, the source, you have it right there. Messenger to the Remnant, page 38. So we're not trying to make everything up. We're bringing you history, Bible, and the spirit of prophecy to prove to you that 1848, there was something that, uh, there was a reason why the Satan was getting very nervous. He saw already that, that this word, that this truth was being established, that, that there was a foundation being built that no man, even the devil himself, was not going to be able to destroy it. Because this ship, what the, has we been told? That the ship is going to what? To go through. Sister what said that. The ship, and what is the ship, by the way? The, the truth of the three angels, the work of the three angels' messages. When you read the whole statement, when she talk about the, that the ship is going to go through, the reason I bring this to you is because I know years ago there was a book. That was the only book that I remember was given for free. Was that book that called that the ship is going to go through? And they use a little bit of, a little paragraph, small paragraph, to trying to apply to the, to, to the structure, to the corporation that is going to go through. And people are so naive that they just conform themselves to read that little paragraph instead of saying, let me be like the Bereans, go in and read the whole statement. So I want to invite you, because I, I, I was just brought with that a couple of weeks ago, right there when I was in Tennessee. Some brethren came to me talking about that the sheep being the, you know, the structure. I said, no, no, no. God says that the structure, when the latter rain will come, will be blown away. So this, yes, the, this ship, the foundation of the work of the message, Sister what says, God says, it's going to go through. And I praise the Lord for that. So that means if, you're, if your life and my life is going to be grounded on this truth, it's going to be transformed by this truth, then your life and my life also is going to go through. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to meet Jesus. We're going to, going to be with him forever and ever and ever. So let Let's move along. So there was the foundation. So Satan was very, very concerned of what was taking place. He knew that what was taking place in 1848 or by 14, 1848 already, it was going to be something that will be last forever and ever and ever. If you go and visit Iran's place, you will see this big sign. Of, this is a historical place for us, for the Advent movement. It says, this, this is what you will see right there. Okay, this is the sign. Here on Epsom Farm, 1832 through 1850, theological birthplace of the what? Seventh-day Adventist, well, Seventh Adventist movement, a church, yeah. An Adventist historic sign. That's right. It's right there. 1844. Paul Gitchin, New York. In 1844, remember that the Lord allowed him to see a vision. Remember the date of the disappointment? Okay. It was, they were waiting at midnight, waiting at 22 for the coming of Jesus. Jesus didn't come. And then he was one of the men that was devastated going through this great disappointment. Do you recall any other time when God's people went through a great, great disappointment too? Do you recall in the history of God's people of a great disappointment that Jesus' disciples went through? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I bring this to you because I have heard more than one time brethren that has been even given up their faith. I 
used to have a preacher in Florida helping us. He has been walking off with the faith. And one of the strong reasons that this man tells me is because, look, this whole other movement has been a fake from the beginning. Look, Jesus didn't even come in on October 22nd. So Satan is deceiving the people. But this man, instead of being Edson, instead of being, you know, uh, uh, giving up his faith, he was prayerfully, and when he was walking to, towards his house, God allowed him to see a vision. Praise God. Praise God. It was at his own poor Gibson farm that Heron Epson saw what? A vision of Christ in the most holy place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That was 1844. Edson's poor Gibson neighbors were O.R.L., Crossio, a millerite preacher too, an editor, and Dr. Franklin Holm, a prominent physician. Together they study and develop the sanctuary message. They, they come together. They came together. Hmm? And they developed. And they were there in the 18, 1848 on those Sabbath and sanctuary conferences coming together to study. Here is a vision, uh, a picture of the, his vision, what God showed to him. Now, let's move along. 1846, in Port Gibson, New York. This is a replica of Heron Epson's board. Can you see? This is, of course, this has been up to date, but this is preserved as a historical, the same way that it was back then. A very old building. If we will go up there today, that you will see. So Aaron Hepson Farm in Port Gibson, Gibson, New York, is rightfully called the theological birthplace of the SDA, of the SDA Church. It was a Port Gibson that the Sabbath and the sanctuary, you know, were laid down the foundation. Now, why uh, reviewing it all? Now, some of you might be asking, well, what is all this? got to do with us or what importance it is that this what was taking place back then uh, to our this end time that we're living again it says it was at Port Gibson and so far that Joseph ate shared the seventh of the Sabbath in the late 46 and then we move along Okay, 1844, Port Gibson. Said Epson, Kosher, and Han sat around the table in Gibson Port, Gibson Farmhouse, trying to discover what Jesus was doing in the most holy place. Okay, so they were getting together, getting together, starting together. Hmm? 1848, Port Gibson, New York. As we saw earlier, the third Sabbath conference took place in the heart. Hiram Exxon's barn. Okay? At that time, God took the servant of the Lord, his, his servant, his prophet, into a vision. And then she recalled the vision. So I went to Port Gibson to attend a meeting at the brother Exxon's barn. There were those present who loved the truth, but were listening to and cherishing error. I was again shown and visioned the importance of the brethren in western New York laying aside their differences and uniting upon what? Bible truth. Why do you suppose that God at the very earliest stage of this movement was sending us a rebuke and a warning that the brethren should be uniting in what? Bible truth. There was something also to come out right around that time. Sit on and you sit tight. This time, my brethren, again, Satan saw something that must put him to be very nervous. Very nervous. 
God says through his prophet, Satan is a diligent Bible student. What else is he saying? He knows that his time is what? Short. And he seeks at every point to counter work the work of the Lord upon it, this earth. Now, how did he begin his, this, his destruction work on this earth? By deception. He saw that that was very effective. Let's see what happened. Did Satan know that the SDA movement was in prophecy? What do you think? Yeah. Of course. He, if God says that he's student of the Bible, he knew that by this time, God was going to raise up not any, not any, not any, any movement, not just another church, not just another message, but the last movement that God was going to have on this earth to work for his kingdom. So he knew this thing. Pay attention to this. April 20, 1848, the date the first Sabbath conference began. Why this should be important to us? Remember, Satan was what? Nervous about it. He knew, according to the prophecy, that this was going to, this ship is going to get to port. <laughs> this movement is going to go, it's going to cross this dark end time world. It's going to come to, it's going to bring, prepare people, men, women, young people, and children into the kingdom. He knew that. So what did he do? Just 20 days earlier, the same year, a couple of weeks before, modern spiritualism was born on the night of March 31st, 1848, in a farmhouse. God's work foundation was being Study and came together in the farmhouse. Satan picked up a farmhouse too. <laughs> come to work. Listen, but this is not all. This is not all. 20 days before that, and the part and was born in the night of the in a farmhouse, just how many miles? Five miles, just five miles from the place where. Satan saw this heavenly group of men setting up the foundation for the truth for this end time. He was setting up also his, this last day deceptive. And this, uh, not that this presentation, tomorrow, you will see that this uh, work that Satan began at that time so this, uh, not that this was the first time, of course, but the, the, the way that he was trying to counter work, God's work, was so similar. It is a counterfeit that it would require prayer and studying because it has been so effective that what started in 1848, it has been even in some way being introduced in our midst and most people don't understand it. We will wait for tomorrow to see that, okay? Let's move along. Have you heard about these sisters? Yes. Satan saw that God has chosen a young woman to be used as an instrument to help this group of men to put together this foundation. So what did he do? He raised up not one. He, he said, God, one, I'm going to have more than one. I'm going to have three. Younger ladies, March 31st, 1848, the Fox sisters demonstrated to their horrified parents that they could communicate with the dead through knacks. They used to use two or three knacks, and they were supposed to be getting in contact with dead people. 
talking to them, communicating with them. And listen to this. Sister White later on spoke about this. You see. She says, through knocks heard through the walls of their home, this grew into a new international movement. This movement will also last until the end of time too. The Bible says that God was going to allow Satan to deceive up to the end of time. Even in the last plague, one of the last plagues, you see, Satan is still deceiving the people. <coughs> Even after the thousand years, Satan will, tr will keep deceiving the people, making them believe that they can go ahead and take over the city. <laughs> From the beginning up to his destruction, he's found out that one of the most effective ways to destroy souls and people is through deception, my friend. This time, you can do a Google map. You can look under your Google. You will see that five miles, 5.6 miles to the north, it was the Fox sister's house. 20 days just before this movement was going to start. Satan knew again what was about to be established. And he was nervous about it. Hmm? it the, the, these young ladies became immediately like a celebrity. Books, movies has been written. TV, Hollywood is being big on this thing. But you know what, brother? God has allowed Satan to continue with this deception because he is waiting. He has been, um, in, in, in the difference of Satan, he doesn't want people to come to him blindly. He wants people to come because we know, that surrender our heart to him, to know him as a, father, a loving father because he, he's the only one who got eternal life. For us, he's the only God the light for us, the only one who got the message for us, the only one who got the truth for us. So the truth is not found in anyone else but in Jesus Christ. That's you have to keep in. Okay, but okay, so let's move along. So five point miles in the north, it was right there in between. Distraction from truth. Ellen White was inspired to write this. 1849, in relationship denouncing the deception that Satan was bringing to these young ladies. She said, I saw that the mysterious knocking in New York and other places was the power of Satan. And that such things would be what? More and more common clothed in a what? A religious. Let me give you a hint. I don't want any, I don't want to make anybody nervous. Have you heard something going on in our midst and some of our churches about and ministers about spiritual formation? Have you heard about how many of you have heard about it? Some of you haven't heard, obviously. I should have asked you, but I'm not gonna ask you. Do you know, brethren, what the origin of that so-called spiritual formation come from? Right from the beginning. But we'll, we'll wait for tomorrow. I prove to you before, beyond any reasonable doubt. If you have an open mind, if you are coming, which I pray that you come to minister this with an open mind, you know, that the Holy Spirit will teach us, will guide us, will open up our eyes. I believe that God wants to have a people awaken and to know, to discern the deception that we have been caught up into. Because she said, clothed in religious garb so as to lull the deceived to greater security and to draw the minds of who? God's people. Who are the God's people? We are. Those people out there are still also in Babylon and those Sunday keeping churches. Satan is going to bring this deception 
that, that was taking place already a few days before Satan saw how God was going to bring out or establish the foundation, he raised up a very subtle, how you pronounce it? Subtle? Subtle, 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 but subtle, what is that? Subtle? In a very deceptive way to destroy souls. Very this, this, um, let's move on. The chosen instrument, Margaret Fox, 15. Ellen Why was how old when God called her? About 17. Well, the same age. See, it, it's a counterfeit, but not one. I'm going to bring two or three. Look at this. And Kate Fox, 11, used knocking to contact a spirit in 1848. This same year, almost at the same month, huh? Ellen Herman was given her first vision in 1848, 17. Just, do you think that's a coincidence? I don't think so. Why is this important, my friend? There is a connection between Sunday and spiritualism. There is modern spiritualism came into the work against the third and his messages. Satan saw that God was, gonna, was putting together was the foundation of this ship that he's going to go through. What, what did he do? He then established a, to counter work a work of these deceptions. The rise of modern spiritualism in 1848 was not just a coincidence, my brethren. Hold on. Do you see? A spirit, God says, Satan is going to use spiritualism, the spirit of that, to bring people to demand Sunday keeping. How do we know? So the miracle working power manifested through spiritualism will exert, exert its influence against those who choose to obey God rather than men. Communication from the spirit will declare that God has sent them to convince the rejectors of Sunday of their error, affirming that the laws of the land should be obeyed as the law of God. That the law of the land should be obeyed as the law of God. Yes, that is true as long as what? As not interfering with God's law, isn't it? But that's not what Satan says. Tomorrow also I'm going to mention to you how this deception has been, sadly to say, introduced into our midst. 1961, what year? 1961. The Supreme Court of this nation ruled that the Sunday laws were not religious but secular. Were not what? Religious but secular. If I ask you, Sister Dorothy, can you, from what you know, from what you have read, think that the laws in reference to Sunday keeping, are they, are they religious or secular? They are religious nature. They are of religious nature. Do you know that in 1961, the highest court of this world, Supreme Court of America, ruled not only one case, four cases, that those laws are not religious but secular. And that's why it can be upheld by the states. You, more, more than one of you will be surprised what the leadership said in 1961. I have it. I'll share it with you tomorrow. And I don't want anybody to say, to think, oh, Pastor Perez is going to be criticized. No, no, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just trying to prove my case. The movement that Satan raised in 1848 is still alive. And it's being introduced in our midst. 
God says that these communications of the Spirit will declare, you know, we have to abide to the law of the land. And that's the reason that we hear in Europe and many other countries when the Sunday has been established at the day of the family, people, even people of our faith say, oh, but don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. This is just a day for the family that, that, that our the parliament, the European parliament is trying to establish. It's nothing to be alarmed. Brethren, this movement a counter work of the three angels message is alive today more than ever and the sad thing is the majority even of our own people don't even understand it the issue let's move on sunday's threefold union we told my brethren the protestants of the united states will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to grasp the hem of what? Spiritualism. Hmm? Spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss, abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. Has this been taking place, by the way? I got a full presentation that some of my brethren in Tennessee saw it a few days ago. I won't have time this time uh, to do it. But... This year, just recently, most prominent evangelical pastors, they didn't wait for the Pope to come here to America, as you know. Next year, they went to the Pope. They were clasping hands. They were embracing the Antichrist. They were saying, it's about time that we are all become one in Christ. And forget about the Reformation. Brethren, I was... Uh, preaching in Germany not that long ago, about four months ago. Some, bar, some brethren took me to, I, I, I have been going to Europe for about, I don't know, for several years, the past 10, 12 years. So this time, I made a commitment with my brethren. I said, this time I will be, I, I'm so tied up over here. The only way I can go there is if you promise that you will take me to the Martin Luther's place. Because I've been going in the past, been going rushing because of time, coming back. I said, Pastor, yes, we'll take you there and all that. To make a long story short, brethren, when they took me to the so-called Martin Luther Museum, we got some pictures. Not here. We can show it another time. Brethren, it looks like a museum of the Vatican. I seen some people say, I hope, I'm sure some of you might be there. Brother, I'm not exaggerating. The building is a huge building. From the entrance almost up to the end, everything got to do with the saints, Paul, this, Saint Elizabeth, saints, another, Saint Pio 9, Saint Pio 10. And oh, you look at the history, all those Pope, what they were doing, they was burning the Christians. But, Thousands of people go over there, pass through the museum without realizing that they have been deceived. But after 40 minutes going through the two guy, to the guy lady, I talked to them, my interpreter that was taking me there. I said, my brother, when are we going to see anything about Martin Luther? Of course, he knew. He says, well, calm down, pastor, calm down. <laughs> Come down. We brought you because you, you asked that you want to see over here. So you're seeing firsthand. So I became a little nervous. You know, I was looking at my watch. The next day I had to come to America. So I said, you know, is it? then one of the brothers was taking me. She said, if you, if you want, because you are not from here, maybe she would not get upset with you. The, the guy said, you can go and ask her. You know, after 40 minutes, seeing Pope after Pope and saints after saints. Nothing about Martin Luther. You know, I, I went to the lady. I said, I, says, um, I came from North America. And one of, you know, my goal was to see a display. You know, to watch. She told me immediately in front of the group. She said, 
You are going to see something about Martin Luther. At the end of the hall, on the right hand side, you are going to see something about Martin Luther. Okay, I retrieved myself. I kept going throughout. Brethren, I couldn't even see the 95 Theses because they had covered it up. They're transforming the whole cathedral, everything in there, because 2017 will be the five, will mark the 500 years of the nailing of the 95 Theses of Martin Luther. And the Lutheran Church already are preparing a huge event we've got to do with getting away, erasing this, what they call, dark chapter of our church, of our history. Brethren, I couldn't believe what I was saying in there. I couldn't see it. Couldn't believe it. That Sunday, the, the, the group of brethren that came with me, he said, we're going to pass you now through Berlin. Many times in the past, I've been taken through Berlin. He says, I want you to pay attention. I want to see what you, you notice, Pastor, through the street of Berlin. I said, okay, let's see what it is. Brethren, when they say, okay, we're entering into the city. We start, you know, walking in the city around and got into the vehicle. We went down around, brethren, Berlin, that Sunday afternoon. It was looking like a cemetery. Everything closed. Everything. There was a physician that was telling me, he says, even if I will open up my clinic today, without emergency, I will get a fine of 500 euro, euro, dollar, euro, my Spanish, euro, 500. Listen, I believe that God on his mercy is allowing people like you and me to know how it's going to come to America. Hmm? The Pope is coming in 2015. Have any of you realized why he has chosen the month of September to come to, to this country? 9 11. 9 /11. That's, that's, a, that's a good guess, Dr. Bandy. Look at your history. It was in September 17, in the month of September, when the Society of Jesus was established. The Jesuits. Is he going to bring his subliminal messages to North America? He has chosen, this is the first Jesuit Pope. And he's chosen the same month when this, when his society, which I hope you know, is not a society of Jesus. I hope nobody will get angry. It is a society of the devil, my friend. Yes. I know what I'm talking about. Why do I say that? Because God said that, not me. God said that, but in, in the sight of every Jesuit priest, there, there is an evil angel. So let's not be deceived. So when I was reading a few years ago in the Adventist Review, saying, you know, we have to be starting, start building bridges, even with Catholic Church, because there are many positive things coming. I said, these brethren don't know what they're talking about. They haven't read, read the Word of God. They don't know that Satan has been deceiving everybody. Of course, Rome is not going to change. No. The reason we have seen that happening. And what, they, what, what are we doing against God's people? Being sleeping. Yes, indeed. Huh? The two great arrows. Through the two great errors, the mortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will what? Will bring the people under his deceptions. While the former lays the foundation of spiritualism, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome. Have we been seeing this taking place? Of course, my friend. Of course. We've seen that. We've seen it. As a matter of fact, the Vatican brag about it. How they got everybody already united with them in their publications. They brag about it. 
They say, oh, you know, we got everybody with us. Just some little groups. So a group of cardinals in Brazil. I got the publication. We put in the gospel letter. See, just a few group of people, especially coming out of the seven them in the church, they're the ones that are giving us trouble in Latin America. I said, praise God. We need more of those little groups. Giving, prob- giving trouble to the Antichrist. Working for Jesus. Saving souls for Jesus. Waking up Jesus' souls that have been cut up in the deception of Satan. Revelation, my friend. It's a prophetic movement. Satan knew this. And they that shall be, they shall be build the old waste places. Huh? Repair it on the beach. They restore it on path to dwell. Uh, uh, and Malachi, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great, the great day. You know, brethren, Jesus has been waiting to have a third Elijah at this same time to prepare the way. The same way that he sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for his first time that he came in, he has been waiting to make out of you and me, each one of us, a third Elijah to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. Yes, Satan counter movement. The end time revival over spiritualism. The Bible says the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Yes, the wonder deceptions. Spirit of devils work in miracle. He doth great wonders, Revelation says. Fox sisters, how does building your, a new home? If you go over there, you will read. Spiritualism originated in March 31st, 1848, in this house. Of course, we know from the Bible that really it started where? Right there, in eating. But for this end time, he has established a new way to deceive, even through churches. Even through religion. Look at this. 